Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I have a how it works style video. And if you've ever wondered how your parking brake works when you hit that button on your dash and you hear those motors just churring away in the back of your car, well, I'm gonna show you how all that works today with this caliper. Now, before we go ahead and begin, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below. Definitely smash the like button because it helps the channel out. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started on today's video. So to start off our video, we have our caliper here. Now this caliper looks a little different because I featured it in a teardown. We're missing the boot, the square cut seals, and a few things that would make this a functioning caliper to get put on a car. Uh, just to give everyone an idea, this is basically uh, what we're missing, the boot and the seal. Uh, and there's also a couple pins and everything here that will lock the worm screw that we're going to be talking about that actuates the parking brake. So basically, when you have an electronic parking brake system, you still have a caliper that looks like this. It looks like a standard caliper, nothing really crazy. However, the main difference is that on the back of your caliper, you're going to have this cutout here where this electric motor would bolt up to, which would normally be back here. And then you also have the little gear. Uh, that's right here that basically would spin with the motor or what the motor will spin basically uh, everyone can see that thing moves there so imagine your electronic motor being on here and that'll spin in whichever direction you command it to so as far as the workings of these calipers it's pretty simple now i have this one uh working as far as the parking brake mechanism and i'll just give everyone a little bit of a demo let me see if i can find the best angle here which is probably going to be this uh, and what we're going to be doing for our motor drive is using our impact with a socket that somewhat fits the splines so imagine we have our brake pads in here and what Typically will happen, now I gotta keep some force on the piston so everyone can get an idea. When you hit your parking brake button to apply it, what'll happen is this will basically screw out just like that. That's that worry noise that you'll hear. So I'll give everyone an example where I'm not talking over it and show everyone how this will work. So let's go ahead and retract this piston in. So basically, let's say you apply the brake. and then you take the brake off. That is how a parking brake system works. Basically, the motor that's gonna be hooked up here is going to you know, spin this one of two ways. Now, these are actually really simple and easy. I mean, you can even spin this by hand. Uh, as everyone can see here, I'm getting this piston to come out and basically retract. Uh, it's a very unique way, and I honestly like this style of parking brake. The only thing that I don't like about it is the fact that the parts, like the motor, the caliper, sometimes they'll uh, price gouge you because they'll say it's electronic when clearly this is a, a manual, basically caliper, like all of them just with an addition of a few parts. Now, you may be wondering, what are those few parts? How does this work? Uh, it's great that you showed us, but what's inside? Well, we are going to go over the mechanism here really quickly. So. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my piston and screw assembly. Now keep in mind, it's gonna come out very easy for us because we don't have the E-clip holding it together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push on our assembly here, get it all out, and let's see if uh, I can get this off in one piece. So we have our caliper, which is bare bones now. Uh, pretty much we can move this to the side. And this is what we're after. Now this, doesn't look like much, it just looks like a screw and some sort of a plate, but there's a whole lot more to this. So this is our caliper piston. This will be pushing on the brake pad. And then if we uh, go ahead and take the piston out of the equation, as you can see, uh, that is just a piston, nothing real fancy. Uh, the only uh, difference that this piston has that a standard piston would have is the fact that it's kind of uh, angular and it's cut out. Uh, I don't know if the camera's picking that up. It's not just a circular piston that has like a flange, kind of like a nut or a bolt will have because this insert also has a unique uh, form fitment and you can't just have this assembly spinning in there. You got to have it square cut. And the best example for that is because this does spin, um, this will basically keep it from locking. So that way it can actually push the piston in and out. Uh, Cause if this was a circular piston, basically this would just spin in there and uh, it wouldn't be able to do its job. Now, 
on top of that modification there's also a nose cone in there you see the little divot in there uh, that is for our screw assembly to get you know a good reach and uh, push the piston out uh, it's like a little nose on it to say the least so the way this assembly works because this is the heart of the parking brake system I'm gonna go ahead and actuate this so everyone can see basically as the screw turns it pushes out on this assembly and that's what we were doing when we were screwing it in and out so to show everyone the parts here we're gonna unscrew this all the way and I don't know what the technical names for these are but I'm gonna call this the pusher so our pusher is basically an aluminum piece that fits inside our piston uh, doesn't move in there just slides in and out no side movement and in the center it looks like they have a threaded insert now this threaded insert i believe is serviceable because it looks like this is pressed in there or maybe it spins out if you have whatever uh weird socket it would be to you know get onto that and maybe there's a jig they put this on and they can unscrew it and i believe when they unscrew that or when you can get that off that'll also come off with this or maybe you press this off this is the screw portion because i'm sure when they rebuild these uh you know that is a serviceable item so the way these come together is basically you have something that has a screw that can be pushed in and out and then you have the screw that is doing the pushing now there's not a whole lot to this it's basically one item and it has a bearing now the top portion is our bearing you can just slide that off and everyone can see here it's just a needle bearing the reason why this is needed is because when there's pressure involved in hydraulic systems uh, and especially this is the backing of it it's going to push up against the wall of this caliper uh, back there and there can be friction so you need a bearing and these needle bearings work quite awesomely at best and i'll be honest with you that is a really nice looking contraption i mean i don't know how it glistens on the camera but i like that it's cool looking uh, we're gonna set that to the side and as far as our uh, screw side here i mean it's really not a whole lot to it uh, there is a washer for our bearing that if i could get it off here it's usually stitched on there because this uh oil keeps it on there oh there you go i lost it again oil makes things stick together really really well especially when it comes down to like washers and little bearing pieces and things like that uh, so our washer is simply there as an in-between surface to help them glide uh, it's normally just the face of that that's how the needle bearing works and then this is our screw so our screw is kind of unique uh, it has our gear side which is the driven part it has a little cutout for the sir clip that would lock it into the assembly which would be this clip right here and when this sticks out of the caliper that's put on there to keep the whole assembly in place so this just doesn't push out and you know your caliper basically explodes uh, with all of its internals and then we have our surface area where the brake fluid is doing uh you know it's passed through and getting in there and where our bearing can load up as this turns uh, another unique feature is you notice that it has these little three cutouts on there those will uh, correspond with this little notch on here and I'm assuming that's just to lock it in place so it doesn't over screw it because most parking brake systems are not smart enough or at least they don't really know when to stop per se so you got to have some way to keep this from overreaching itself and really hammering this in tight because that'll mess up the assembly and basically these little notches that are cut out on there and that little uh, groove I don't know if the camera picks it up but it's right there right there everyone can see it uh, what that does it keeps this from basically stripping itself uh, because the way the motor works like I said is uh, it's gonna basically unscrew and screw until it meets a force it can't go further with and then what the computer does it'll say i have too much amps going through so i need to stop that's how the system works so when you're unscrewing this or retracting it once those two items hit each other and i should probably uh give everyone a good example of this here let's screw it in notice how as soon as it catches it wants to drive it now let me get my gloves out of here but basically unscrew it and then screw it if it catches right there you will see and this is hard to show 
but there is a little gap in between there. And I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick that up. And that's just there because if I was the electric motor and I'm screwing this in, the second I meet resistance, the computer's gonna pick up on that and say, okay, my parking brake is disengaged and cut power to the motor. And then same thing when you're unscrewing it, as the brake pad gets jammed on the rotor uh, to apply the brake, the computer will pick up that the motor is pulling in higher power and say, okay, I've reached my end and it'll stop. So even though it's a smart system, it's also kind of a dummy system because the way that it's checking itself, if it's applied or unapplied, is basically through voltage and amps and it knows. Uh, I don't think they time these or anything because it would be impossible to know how long to keep the motor on for a pad that's down to like 20% or 70% uh, pad life. So they just basically go on the principle of is when the motor's working freely, it's good. When it jams up and it's requiring more amps or power, computer senses that and says, hey, stop, we're good. And that's pretty much the ins and outs of a parking brake system. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this because you know, I'm not the best explainer of things on camera, I guess you can say, especially with stuff like this, because I don't know what it's called, but I at least wanted to share how this works in case you're ever wondering how these electronic parking brakes work. So that is how your parking brake works on your vehicle when you push that button on your dashboard. And uh, I will say I do like electronic parking braking systems, but they can be quite expensive. Uh, when you have this system in your vehicle, there's a lot of things like a computer running the show, wiring harnesses, uh, connectors, switches, relays, motors to pretty much run everything. And then you also have the added mechanicals to the caliper, which uh, all in all will wind up costing more if you ever have a failure and can be a little bit of a nuisance because, well, electronics are a little bit uh, more, uh, I guess you can say, kooky. You need more things to diagnose them like computers and things like that. So that is the downside of having a system like this, although I am very fond of them because uh, they work. They work very well, and I like the fact that you can push a button instead of trying to pull a manual uh, brake cable or pushing a pedal to snap a cable or something. Uh, here in the Midwest, parking brakes usually don't work because uh, you'll pull on it once and it'll break because no one's ever used it. So I like this because it's always in use and it's a big safety thing. It saves transmissions uh, from you know breaking down earlier. Uh, that's the whole point of why they have changed the nomenclature from emergency brake to a parking brake. So uh, you know I like them, but they can be costly. The biggest disadvantage that I want to say is the price gouging when it comes to parts in the system. Uh, calipers like this normally are about 100 bucks at most parts stores, but if you have an electronic parking brake one, expect to pay a little bit more. Uh, sometimes you'll pay like 150, 200 bucks. This one was around 250 because it came off of a newer vehicle that's only two model years in, and these are kind of scarce to find for a vehicle uh, that was made in uh, 2022 or 2021, I believe it was. So fairly new vehicle this came off of and it already had issues because it was a corporate use vehicle which racks up a lot of miles but at the end of the day um, you know it is what it is there's nothing you can do for that but if you have the system expect to pay more so we'll leave it at that uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully I did a good job of showing it to everyone and if you ever had that wonder of how it works well now you know. So hopefully everyone enjoyed this video. Comment, like, and subscribe because it definitely helps the channel grow. I hope everyone has a wonderful day and I'll catch you on the next video.